There are well over a thousand stately homes and country seats in Britain, and if he had his way, Drew would visit all of them. Not as a sightseer, but as a salvage hunter. Country houses, their outbuildings, their stuff is of superb quality, and I absolutely cannot wait to get there, really. Come on, Ed. Come on. With his trusty sidekick, Julian, Drew heads out on a country house marathon. First is a five-hour drive to Devon, to a grand country home long owned by the family of Francis Fulford. My name is Francis Fulford, and this is behind me is my house, called the same name as me, Great Fulford. And we've lived here for more than 800 years. Today is going to be an interesting one. We're going to see Francis Fulford. His family have owned this house since... God, 11-something. Oh, Christ, yeah. Fulford not only has a great home, he might just be Drew's favourite kind of aristocrat. And he's skint. Generally, yeah. And loads of these lords and ladies are broke. They've got no cash because they've got these fabulous houses and nobody realises it costs £100,000 a year just to keep the thing stood up. Yeah, true. Very My good, gut though. reaction is he's already flogged everything because he's skint. The stuff that's been in the family for the last two or three hundred years, he's not going to want to sell it. So it could be a total bust today. Aha, here we are. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Wait till you see this place. Oh. Ta da! Check that out. Not bad, eh? Hello. Often with big country houses, Drew is only given access to the sheds and outbuildings. Whilst these are usually good hunting ground, it's inside the house where he really wants to be today. Pretty damn impressive, yeah. Hi, Francis. Hi. Drew. Yes. How are you doing? We spoke on the phone. That's right. And what are you, uh, hard hand? I'm you a hard help, yes. Yeah. Right, you so. do the heavy lifting. Right, come on yeah. in. What do you want to see? Uh, everything, to be honest with you. Anything you've got for sale, particularly things in the house. But after a tempting glimpse of the inside, Francis has other ideas and takes Drew straight outside. We'll go and duck and dive up into some of the old buildings I've got round about, which okay. are full of bits and pieces which come out of a house. Fingers crossed, we might find something you want. OK, so where are we going, up here? Yep, yeah, yeah, straight across. We've accumulated a load of clutter and junk, and some of that junk and clutter is scattered around the buildings and the yards which adjoin the house. Lead on is through those portals and mouse around. Don't worry if an odd bird disturbs you. These carvings are nice, aren't they? These are good, Francis. Where did these come from? They came out of a ballroom about 1690, I suppose. When you inherit a house like this, people often say, what are you trying to do? It is inevitable that every now and again you want to clear some of it out, and sometimes it does clear out. But sometimes things just go on sticking there. One day I'll put them back. Are they, are these aren't for sale. I don't think they're for sale. Now, one day I have my ambitions. I'll use them again. Yeah. Oh, they're good. I like these. Underneath the table, there was a pair of cloches. And what I like about them is they're a pair. And the colour's good. He's painted over the top, and it's old paint as well, which I like. So these have come off the estate, have they? Yeah, they've been here all the time. Oh. It's basically a portable greenhouse, isn't it? It is. Cloches, French for bell, are used to extend the life of plants by keeping the frost away. Drew could easily sell these Victorian examples as interior decorative features for around £300. They're in really nice order, mostly original glass as well. I think we've only got one break there. Is this something that you'd consider letting go? Yeah, I'd yeah. be, be, be consider, be consider accepting an offer for that. How much would you like for them? What do you reckon? I was expecting you to make me an offer okay. and, and start from there. OK, all right. I thought Francis was going to be really tricky and I thought I'll go in with a, an OK price, but, you know, a little bit cheap. 150 for the pair? Yes, I think that'd be fair. Bit of luck. Fantastic. He's happy, I'm happy. I thought you were still going to put up a fight. Thank no, you. I won't put up a fight <laughs> if it's a fair offer. Great, OK, and I'm really happy with those. That's fab. OK, so I want you to tell me the really good stuff in the house, you see. That's what I'm after. But Francis still isn't ready to let Drew loose on the inside of the manor. Instead, he wants to show him another piece of the house's past, a man trap. My God, look at this, Jules. 
<laughs> that is to trap a man and take his leg off, or at least make sure he doesn't run away. It's illegal to set a man trap, but they can be bought and sold, and they're growing in popularity. An example like this can sell for anything up to a thousand pounds. Have you ever had this working? Oh yeah. Yeah. It yeah, take two of you to set it. I take your leg off. I would take your leg off. Just press that. That drops down. Watch yourself. Yeah, that's not actually. Well, that's that's it. That's it. Yeah, I know what it is. My fingers in there as well. When I got burgled at the shop, I'd love to have a couple of these lying around. Do that. <laughs> Into that. Just vicious. What a thing. God, imagine, and you couldn't get out of it either, could you? Because you couldn't push both sides down. Much call for them up in Chester, do you think? Yeah, North Wales, very popular. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, everybody wants one of these. I didn't understand why he w didn't want to make me a generous offer. We'll leave it. Yeah. Thanks for the offer. OK, so where I really would like to see is inside the house. Where quite a lot of stuff is stored and has become a, a repository, if you like, for, um, Defunct bits of kit. Okay. So we'll go and have a look in there. Yeah. And we'll see if you anything takes your fancy. We'll go through the great hall. Finally, Drew is into the inner sanctum, but he needs to keep his fingers crossed not only for a good find, but also for the approval of Mrs. Fulford, who Francis must consult on most buys. Everybody got a wife who says, "Oh, don't throw that away. It might come in useful sometime." So. Put it up in the loft and I'll get round to mending it one day. You dream about getting into places like this and um, being allowed to buy things. And uh, it's privilege, you know, you don't get into these places all the time. And there's different ages of panelling all over the place. Oh, there's different, yeah, the, what we think happened is they probably um, picked up the panelling from around the house in about 1690 when they were having a sort of a rush of blood to the head and spending money. <laughs> <laughs> these are lovely. Yeah, they're gorgeous, love those. Really beautiful. Like this. Would this be... Would this be something that you'd consider well, selling? Well, I might do. I'd have to consult with uh, my wife on that matter. OK. There's another one over here as well. Would this be something you'd consider getting rid of? Yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah. Period furniture is very popular with designers and decorators, and even in this state, Drew can sell them for around £300 each. It's well made, it's got great proportions, and it's just beaten up enough that you just got to fall in love with it, really. It must be something I'd be interested in, for sure. Do you want to give me a clue what you'd like for it? Well, I was thinking about sort of 150 for that. Yeah, I was thinking about exactly the same figure. Well, we really. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we were. No, I'm happy with that. No, okay. I'll, I'll take that, Francis. It's going to find a far better home with Drew and with who he sells it to. We don't think it, if it had stayed here. Another beautiful day. Oh, we could do with rain. Just as he's leaving, Drew finds a rare 19th-century granite trough. Nice big trough. Popular with garden designers, depending on age and size, they can sell for between 300 and 500 pounds. The method of making a trough like that has probably not changed since the Iron Age. Is this something you'd sell as well, Francis? It would be something at the right price, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they fetch a price now. They do. Have you got anything that would lift it up? Have you got a tractor? No. I haven't got a forklift, no. I suspect if you tip the farmer up the road a few quid, he's probably got a forklift, okay. and he'd come down and move it for you. It's generally in good, it's generally in good order. Sometimes they're broken or they've been drilled for holes. There should be a, a water hole here somewhere. There you go. So it's been drilled to let the water out there. What would you want for it if we were able to move it? I'll be looking at, I don't know, 220, something like that. Well, I'd take it for that if we could pick it up. While Drew waits for a farmer and a forklift, he and Julian prepare the trough for transfer. Meanwhile, Francis goes to consult with the missus. Sorry. When Francis comes back, he's clearly got something on his mind. I Drew and I had done a deal, but unfortunately, as in most things, there's a third party to be involved in this. Um, who came raging down like the Syrian descends like a wolf on the fold. And um, that third party, my wife, she's convinced she doesn't want to sell it, although, strangely, it sat over there completely neglected for the last 20 years without anybody wanting it. OK. But now, because you want it, she wants it. OK. As a result, I'm going to ask you mm. to release me from the deal. 
that was all slightly very embarrassing. I'm not going to come between a man and his wife, so fair enough. OK, well, I understand, I understand. Really, no, really... No, it's fine, it's fine. You're sorry? It happens. Well, don't worry about it. Happens. I'm sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. You can't ever anticipate it. No. We're female of a species. Well... Well, there we are. So I'm presuming that the, uh, the sofa's are off as well. I'm really sorry, mate. She actually has an emotional attraction to that sofa, which I'm not aware of. She nursed our twins on that sofa. And it's not just the sofa and the trough. It's also a no-deal when it comes to the cloches. I have to respect his wishes, and if that's what they want, we'll happily let them keep it. Drew and Julian load up their one remaining purchase and leave before Francis gets into any more trouble. It's exactly what I wanted, a piece of uh, an English country house. The look, the feel, and even that... See how beaten up it is with the secondary cover over the top and everything? Even that, for me, is just charming. OK, we're done. We all packed up? All packed. Francis, <laughs> been a pleasure. Really has. All the best. And to you. And to you. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you very much. And great fun. And you never know. If I'm ever up in bloody Chester, <laughs> I might come and knock on your door. Come and see us. Come and buy something off you. And you'll buy something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see you. Thanks, Francis. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. I like that, don't you? It's like hell. It's, it's a classic country house armchair. It's the thing I've been, you know, I'm always looking for those. But I talk about disappointing on that trough. Yeah. Doesn't get any closer and then no prize, does it? At this moment, I'm £30 down because I have to pay the farmer. <laughs> Seriously, I've gone there to buy something and I've lost money. So the only winner is the farmer for getting 35 quid for moving it. Yeah, you can go out to the pub tonight. Back at base in North Wales, Drew's wife, Rebecca, Restorer Gavin and online sales manager, Mark, are expecting a van full of marvellous manor house booty. Do you believe where we got this from? Um, no. Francis Fulford. Yeah. So I managed to buy this off him, which is proper... ..proper 19th century armchair. I'm just trying to think what his house would look like if he had that in it. <laughs> you know, we've got people clamouring for this stuff. It's period. Drew's business depends on the fast turnover of lots of items, and one armchair just won't do. He needs to get back on the road and fast. However, we've got plenty of restoration work to be getting on with. There's no need for Drew to be here at all. I'm going to crack the whip, and he's going to go off to see um, a manor house called Grey's Court, dating back to 1080, and I'm sure full of wonderful items. It's off to York, to one of the oldest continuously occupied buildings in the country. It's currently being turned into a hotel by owner Helen and coordinator Penelope. My name is Helen Herity. I own Grey's Court. My name's Penelope Ward and I'm the events coordinator. I'm just dying for some quality. I could just do with, you know, something really period, a really good period table or a lovely period bench or painting or mirror or something. This is expensive area, high Victorian. Lots of money. Watch the corner. Watch that corner up there. There's York Minster. Yeah. Wow, it's gorgeous. Hello. Hi. You must be Drew. Yeah. Hi. Hello, I'm Helen. Drew. Good to meet you. And you. I'm Penelope. Hi, Hi nice Penelope. to meet you. Great. Uh, well, Jules and I have come up today. I believe you've got some things for sale, possibly. Yes, we've got quite a few interesting things. This time, he's dealing with the ladies of the manor face-to-face. -face. But will they be any easier to win over? Well, the house itself dates back to 1080. It was commissioned by the first Norman Archbishop uh, who built York Minster. I bought this house six years ago. We've been developing it as a hotel ever since. Wow. So is this... You have this open to the public as well? All the gardens are open and people can have tea and scones in the garden. This is one of the only buildings in York that has an access from the medieval it's walls. Actually... So you can walk around... These are the medieval walls of the castle? That's yeah, right, and then that's drop right. into the garden. It's amazing seeing the min minster so close behind. I know. It's staggering. OK, so yeah. these are the sheds? Yeah, it's this room here. This room here. Yeah. It's some okay. of the furniture from the house. What I'm hoping for is to find some, you know, period chimney pieces, some nice mirrors, a good run of chairs, a great big table, some cabinets, something interesting, and of period, and of real quality. 
say, there's a lot of stuff that we've just sort of accumulated over the years and not known quite what to do with. That's the old four-poster bed. We've all slept in that one. <laughs> yes, but not together. That's quite, uh, that's quite a nice early this piece thing, of carving, yes. isn't it? It's supposed to be part of a, a very early 17th century bed, but we're not sure of the provenance on that. No. We've got two sides. This is the end, the side. Oh, here are the sides, here, okay. actually. Do you have another panel like this? No, I'm afraid not. Just that's that one? Just the head. Okay. I don't know whether he'd be interested in the stuff we've got here. It's a chance for us to sort of get rid of some furniture that will otherwise sit there for the next 20 years. Where did these come from? They were made for the house. When it was part of the St John's University in the Long Gallery, they had three of these tables in a huge row down the middle. They look like 1900, 1910, somewhere around there. Right. Drew knows that large tables such as these with cast iron provenance will command big money. He could easily get around £3,500 for each of these once restored. It's exactly the thing I wanted to find. Nice big plank tops, great colour with complete known history, and they were made behind me at York Minster. Are these for sale? Uh, yes, yes, they would be. This is Drew's chance to bring home that one big item that Rebecca and the team are so eagerly expecting. But Penelope is armed and ready to do battle with this hunter. What would you like for them? Who do I talk money with? Penny does the negotiations. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't do money very well at all. And I've heard about Drew's reputation, and I think he would... Um, yeah, I think Helen would probably give it away, wouldn't you, Helen? I find the whole concept of haggling and just really, really embarrassing. I can't do it. I don't know. I think um, uh, in order for us to replace them, it would be about sort of two, two thousand pounds. Two and a half thousand. Probably each to replace. Yeah. Each. Got... Yeah. To replace, each. yes, it would be. No, that's too much. I, I'd like to pay. I, we're in a bit of the same area. We're in thousands, anyway, not hundreds. Okay. I'd happily pay a thousand each. Wow. That's quite, uh, that's quite a difference, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What right. do you think, Helen? I think two thousand pounds is a good price for one. Yeah, no, I, can't, I just can't get there. They are good. We're not, you know, I'm not trying to fool you and say these aren't good tables. These are great tables, and as a matched pair, they're so much more valuable to me as well. So can we get to 2,500 for the pair as they are, and I'll take them away? Mm. Well, if we said 1,500 for one... Yeah. I'd like to pay a bit less than that. Can we do sort of 1,250, and I'll take whichever one I can? They're both in re similar condition. But 1250, because one's nowhere near as attractive as, as, as taking a pair. I can see that, but yeah. it'd be a strange. 1500, come on, Drew. Penny's clearly enjoying having a bit of a laugh point. and a deal. <laughs> this, uh, but I think Penny wants to do that. I think she has. She wants to uh, to do a deal. That's leaving a very very small bit of profit in there for me, and I've got work to do. So come on, 1250 is is where I need to be. I thought I was ready for him, but uh, not as ready as I thought. No, he's very good. <laughs> 14. Final offer. <laughs> Final <laughs> offer. That's it. 1400. 14. And I can pick the best one. You can choose You can take the best one and you'll put it on the van for me. Yeah, you no. really <laughs> do, <don't. laughs> No, you have to take it yourself. You sure? It's cash and carry. All yeah. oh, right, it's not delivered. Drew was very good. I mean, he did get it for a lot cheaper than we would have originally let Great. it go for. <laughs> okay. 1400. I'll take the best okay. one. Lovely. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great. There you are, Jules. Great. Pick Thanks. the best one, check it on the van. Okay, all right. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> on my shoulder. I can't bear parting with anything, but, uh, but I'm glad it's going to a good home. And um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the day. It's been, it's been fun. I found this book, and in it, see? Ah. There they are in the gallery, set up for lectures. So there's three of those tables originally. Yes, there were. I think, That's Helen, great. that we should sell him it. How much, how much will you give us for it? She's already given it to me. Oh. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> 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 you missed the trick there. It was our quid. Yeah. Wow. Mm. OK, well, what we'll do is, when we sell the table, well, this will be given to the people or pinned yeah. up underneath so they can, they can know where it's come from. See what it's there. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, well, look, it's been, been a pleasure. And I've really Thank enjoyed you. the house. It's beautiful. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. OK, should we get off? Yeah. Thanks. Move. OK, we'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. That was nice, wasn't it? Pleasant afternoon. Oh, pretty pleasant. All of the tables we get like that, they'll sell pretty quickly. I reckon, you know, it's going to be a good few hundred quid to sort that out. It's a great piece, but once again, it's a disappointing haul from a location that promised so much. I like that. I'll tell you what, we're going to get grief when we get back to the shop. Rebecca's going to kill you. Oh. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? 
have a look. Oh. Oh my good yard. Mm. That's it. A table. It's nice, isn't it? It's um, yeah. stunning. So it needs some work, so we'll have to get Alex to sort it out for yeah. us, but it's such a good size. French polisher Alex is just up the road from the shop. Drew has been using him for 10 years. Drew's dropped the 12-foot refectory table off with me in solid oak, and it's a bit dark and grubby. And Drew likes them light, silvery, with a bit of a golden tinge to them. So in order to get that colour, we're going to strip off all the old varnish. You can see it's getting a sort of silvery sheen to it, just from giving it a very fine wire walling. Now we've got this lovely, silvery, clean look to it, nice and light, but still keeping some of that original character. And if you compare that to how it looked before, you can see it looks a bit grubby, dark, a little bit tatty, really. The tabletop's got a big gap in. This has been caused by shrinkage of the planks over the last 100 years, really. It's opened up a gap about a quarter of an inch, about, about eight millimetres. So we're going to have to cut the ends of the table, bring the centre section back in, and then put the ends back on. Not something that Drew would like to watch, but when it goes back to him, we'll be happy. While Alex continues restoring the table, Drew and Julian hit the road once again. This time, it's a three-and-a-half-hour drive to Chavenage House in the Cotswolds. Today, we're going to go and see a lady called Caroline, who owns a spectacular Cotswold manor house. I'm Caroline Lazy Williams. I'm a member of the Lazy Williams family who've lived at Chavenage House since 1891. Primarily, we keep the house as a family home, but obviously, if we can open up to the public for events and weddings, etc., we will. They're saying there's possibly things for sale. So the opportunity, as usual, is massive if there's anything of note here. Who knows? Oh, wow, look at this place. What a pad. Hi, Caroline? Yes. Drew. Oh, Drew, hi. hi. Nice to see How you. you. Doing? This hi. is Julian. Julian. Hello, Julian. Come on in. Wow. This is the Great Hall. We believe the middle core of the house was built in about 1385, so we've got a medieval core, and then a lot of additions. This is the family. This is the family, yeah. My great-great-grandfather, who I can thank for being here, because he made the money. That is quite a spectacular chimney piece, isn't it? No, it's lovely. I mean, it's later than the rest of the room, about yeah. 1680. These windows are interesting because they're a medley window, so they're fragments of lots of different windows obviously put together over time. In addition to salvage hunting, Drew has been restoring stained glass windows for over 20 years and spots a particularly rare example. You've got a beautifully rare piece of stained glass that you don't see very often, and it's a sundial in stained glass. Oh, right. There's a whole society to, to dedicated to finding and uh, uh, researching them. For a man who carries his cap in his back pocket, um, he certainly appears knowledgeable. Well, I should imagine, I'm guessing, but is there nothing in the house for sale? Oh, we've been very much the family who haven't sold to survive. Yeah. And everything in the house, I think, is no-go area. OK. But I'm very happy to show you some sheds and things outside where we've... Yes, please. So the house is a no-go, and once again, it's off to the sheds. But Drew's optimistic he'll find something. Round to the back to find things. Tradesman's entrance. Well, <laughs> yeah. Outside, there's certain bits which they've been stored for 30, 40 years. Nobody really wants them. The more space you've got, the more rubbish you've got, and a lot of it is rubbish. Well, there's a bit of good stonework under here, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's got a, it's got a face in there. What they are, I thought they were off a gable, but they're not. They are staircase supports. Really? Yeah. So you've got a, a lion on that one. Beautiful, isn't he? Very simple medieval type face on it. It's not medieval, it's later than that, but it's still it's pseudo, beautiful. Right? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'll stop messing about and in your garden. And then now, the, the cannon is just anti theft. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come into the stable yard. Come on, dogs. <laughs> this is what we call the workshop, but there are some quite interesting okay, bits. Some... They're interesting, these pieces behind here. I think that is a big. Big wardrobe. I seem to remember my grandfather's house keeping glasses and, you know, it's in the sort of dining room cupboard, as it were. Just trying to look at these, see if any of these carvings are original. They look oh. quite original. I'd say that piece is much older than everything surrounding it. And you can see on the back where 
there, where they've made them up. See how much thicker they are? Oh, golly, these yeah. pieces here. That is not as old as that. Right. And that's much newer than that. And these clearly are English, oh, wow. English linen fold panels in a Gothic manner. That's probably been a piece of wall panelling. That's interesting, because when I walked around the front of the house, there was English Gothic architecture of the same age as that panelling, I, like, identical. So I'm thinking, oh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, that's from the house. It's got to be. 18th century panels like these are popular for restoration or just as decorative pieces and could easily fetch upwards of £500 each. Interesting. Another one as well. It's the other side there, so there's more of it. So these are worth a bit too? Yes, they're definitely something I'd be interested in buying. And this is the stuff that really gets me excited. Finding elements of old buildings like this is just lovely, especially when they've been tucked away for so long. One of the problems with Drew's job is that when he identifies something of interest, the owner often decides to keep it, even when they previously had no idea what it was. But I could see your face change as soon as you saw those. <laughs> yes, I feel like they knew the doors were like this, but I had no idea that was there. Yeah. So now seeing it afresh, is this still something you'd be interested in selling? To be honest, I have no idea what it's worth. I, mean, I would have to consult with, with the family. Oh, dear. It seems Drew may be dealing with another unseen matron of the manor. Obviously, I'd like to buy it all, but we'll see. It would be rather sad to sell it out of the house when it has been our sort of ethos to try to keep as much in the house as possible. Should we continue through continue the other Continue through, and then we'll yeah. have a chat about it. We'll have a chat about this and discuss, because yeah. it is something I want to purchase. Yeah, but I'll, I'll think about it. This lamp down here. There's one straight down where my parents use, and there's that one. Well, I'll tell you what, you're thinking about the panelling. I'll have to think about this, okay. because it's just, it's a project, and we've got an awful lot. I don't think you'll find much in there, to be honest. Though Drew suspects he won't be able to buy the carved panels, he suddenly finds something Caroline might be able to sell without consulting the family. Have you found something? Yeah. That's rather nice. It's a English Art Deco ceiling light. Really good one. Good quality. Finding an Art Deco lamp in this house was a style that sort of threw me. I'm thinking, well, you must have found this somewhere else because there's no Deco influences anywhere in the house. To me, I thought it, when he first showed it was a jelly mould. So what date would you say that was? It's the 20s? Yes, spot on. Period lighting from any era sells well, and this piece of 1920s glamour could easily bring over £250. Shame about the damage. Can you open it up? I just want to open it up again and just see if that damage is visible through the frame. Ah, uh, where, was, where, where was that? Where did you find... you pass me that piece, it fell out. So you broke it? Oh, that'll be <laughs> it. You pass it to me and I broke it. That'll be the way it works again, is it? Yeah. Oh, you can just see it. People love or hate it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but I think it's lovely. Yes, it's not my style, to be no, honest. exactly, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. slightly more used to the oak panelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, this a, is this for sale? Well, I mean... Yeah. Yes, potentially. I'm, uh, potentially, 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 yeah. I mean, that's potentially. much more likely. Are we able to discuss money, or is that do you need to go and...? Um, what sort of value is that? Um, as it stands there, I think we'd pay um, about £75 pounds right. for that. It would have been more, but there's a chip to the glass there. It is just about visible. Um, and right, we've got honest, it, we can stick it back on. Yeah. To be absolutely honest, I have no idea it was even there. No. The house isn't so in, set up in the 1920s, and when he actually offered 75 quid for it, um, I thought that wasn't bad. I could pay for <laughs> a few bottles of gin, which we probably need. Is this a sale? Am I allowed to buy this one, do you think? Yeah. OK, wonderful. No, it's well spotted. It's my job. <laughs> Although she doesn't have the authority to sell everything, Drew clearly has a fan in Caroline. You can't take Drew past any pile without him climbing up and started fundling around. He was interested in all sorts of things, I mean, whether it was your dog or your ferret or whether it was your panini picture. Probably you must get everybody searching around. Um, it's a fascination I've had my whole life, to be honest with you. You need somebody like Drew to really kindle your interest, and there is a value in what we call our rubbish. And it was just fascinating to go around with somebody who could see it. Things. In another shed, one of Drew's favourite things, a battered old armchair. He usually sells on chairs like these without reupholstering, and an example like this could fetch around £300. OK, there's another one underneath it, isn't there? Can I see that one as well? You don't want a lot, do you? Just uh, seeing if it's got a good enough look about it. Not I think it has. Well, it has got a good look. I think it has, yeah. So would you cover this in leather? No, I won't. I, I sell these on as they are. 
Right. So I'm looking, I'm looking at the frame and the proportions and does it sit well, is it good looking, uh, are all the bits that you can't repay... And repate. you can see through this hideous screen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you imagine that in a beautiful sort of calico yeah. colour all over and then the frame polished back, it's a very good looking chair. There you go, there's the original fabric on it there. Oh, wow, it looks rather nicer, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Isn't that? That's beautiful. Should we take it down anyway, Jules? Yep. Oh. See, that one... To when... me, it's not quite as good looking as the other one. When are they called nursing chairs? Could be a nursing chair, but usually they've got no arms on. In case you've got twins. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking a great deal of money here, but because they, they need a yeah. hell of a lot of work. So what sort of price? Um, I think you'd be surprised. I'll give you £150 for that wrecked armchair. Golly. Yeah. Uh, that is a surprise. That is a surprise. <laughs> the one behind, yeah. 20 quid. Right. I mean, that does surprise me. I mean, I, I, I'm I, surprised how much I've just offered you for it. <laughs> but I think, I don't go I back. No, I think it's worth it. Do you want to go and discuss or do you need... Have yeah, you I will. I'll just go and get my mother and just look at, look sure. at the chairs. I'm not happy with the light. OK. So far, Drew has made only one small buy and the jury is still out on the chairs and the carved panels that he really wants. But he'll have to wait while Caroline consults with her parents. I've just spoken to my father. Um, he thinks they're intrinsically valuable to the house. As Drew thought, now he has drawn attention to the value of the panels, they're off limits. It's an occupational hazard. I'm sorry, but mm. just feel, especially the, the bit you show me here. Yeah, I can uh, understand. Uh, I can understand why that one for sure. Yeah. I just think is we wrong to sell something which come out of the house. No, fair enough. I do okay. agree. I'm not upset at all. Not at all. It stays here, where it should be. What about the chairs then? What did they say about the chairs? Chairs. <laughs> chairs happy to go. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there wasn't a huge amount for you to find. Don't worry, it's not a problem. Good. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. I enjoyed it anyway, yeah. and the cool. house is stunning. Well, we, we feel very beholden to it, really, but it's, it is wonderful. It's been a great privilege to grow up here. What a pad. Very nice. I'll send my man round in the morning, we'll do the paperwork, I'll take it. <laughs> Though two chairs and a light are less than Drew anticipated, he's hoping the last country house on the list will bring greater riches in the morning. It's a short stop from Gloucestershire to Leominster. Drew really needs to fill up at this next venue to make this two-day trip worthwhile. We're going to see Edward Simpson at Burton Court today. He's got loads of stuff to sell. This is Burton Court. Lived here all my life. My father bought the house 50 years ago, and I do a whole range of functions to keep the house afloat. They're using it as a wedding venue, a hotel, and they're doing a lot of work on the place, and they're looking to clear out some furniture. And it looks like a pleasant place. If it's a hotel, they might have, you know, have a nice lunch, country house hotel lunch. That'd be lovely. Here we are. Welcome to Burton Court. Thank you very much. Wow, amazing place. Oh, well, thank Pretty you. I just wouldn't want to cut your lawn, though. <laughs> it takes a day. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if I could see what you've got. Yeah, of course. That'd be all right. Yeah, of course. Through here? Yeah, front door. Edward leads Drew straight into the house, promising start, assuming there are no hidden wives or parents to scupper his plans to buy. Wow. <laughs> God, it is. Well, that's, re that's really something, isn't it? It dates back to 14th century. It's a very baronial room. We used to have a lot of animal heads in here. Uh-huh. And we do a lot of weddings here. Uh, a lot of the brides were getting off put by it. Really? So, yeah, it's the feedback I got. So I thought, oh, it's a tough decision. But we took down a lot of the animal heads. Okay. Is that part of the stuff you're selling? Yeah, possibly, yeah. We might be interested in selling yeah. some of that. The bride's reluctance to be watched over by dead animals could mean a jackpot for Drew. Taxidermy, antlers and all things hunting are extremely fashionable for interior designers and photographers. Along this way. But just as Drew thought he was firmly installed in the main house, he finds himself once again in decidedly more humble quarters. 
Yeah, being um, a museum, we have lots of curios in the house, so which uh, also we're doing more of the weddings these days, so it's keen to might be interested in selling some. OK, what's what's for sale here? Um, not the penny file, I'm afraid. Oh, That's really? That's friends, uh, so oh. we can't sell that, but... That was something I'd really want. <laughs> Air Raid Siren. They make a hell of a noise. Does it work? Oh, it's very loud. <laughs> it can be a lot, yeah, lot it louder than that. a lot more, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially if you open... Oh, you've got it nearly half up. Fully open and give it a really good going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun twice and then it's a pain enough. in the neck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing there. So, hey, it happens, but there's an awful lot more to see, so... Fingers crossed. The animal heads are in here and here. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, look at this lot. That's really odd when you look into a little tiny space that's completely black, and then you look in, put the torch on, and, wow, all these sort of heads are looking at you. It's, uh, yeah, quite an experience. Like, whoa, it does hit you, you know? Drew has potentially hit gold, but he's learned not to get too excited when it comes to country house swag. He needs to establish just who is the decision maker when it comes to sales. It's a lioness, I think. Old lion, half grown. German, German East, Africa. East Africa. So, all everything in here is for sale. Um, we try. We're quite keen on keeping some of the big ones because they're quite okay. rare. No shield with that one. Straw. Yeah. Yeah. He's been leaking dandruff a bit. Oh, God, yeah, he's in a right state, isn't he? Do some damage, wouldn't that? That would do some damage. Luckily, they're facing backwards. No, neither of those for me. OK. What about this one? Well, what's uh, of interest with this one? I mean, it's very big horns. I think it's the scale, and I like the skull more, more than anything. Not too sure on this one. Maybe? Maybe. 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 OK. That would be something I'd be interested in, for sure. OK. There's one here I've seen that I quite like the look of. OK. Oh, a little badger. Yeah. Poor little fella. Okay. So is he, is he for sale? Yeah, well, badgers are not very popular with my farming friends around here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the yeah, badger's for sale. OK. All right, how, how much would badger cost me today? Well, for you, maybe, let's go for, say, £40. The shield's quite good for it. Yeah. OK. Bad just coming home with us. Fair enough. There you go. Got a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's allowed to have one no, friend. That's not, no, that's okay. So, um, is, is this something that's for sale? Um, yeah, potentially. Okay. I'll have to just check with senior management. Okay. As in parents. Oh dear. Once again, there's an unseen chain of command that could stand between this hunter and his prey. Okay, so we got another room here. These are the chairs you were mentioning. Yeah. Well, that's quite good. Nice shape. Looks like the original upholstery on it as well, doesn't it? It's the classic sort of country house, 19th century armchairs, side chairs, nursing chairs, anything upholstered, really, that I like. Edward's mother has given him permission to sell the chairs, and, if nothing else, Drew can fill his van with them. He knows that they can each bring over £150 unrestored. What would you want for this, then, Edward? Well, um, I don't think it would be particularly worth much. Make me an offer and I'll uh, think. Um, that condition there. Uh, where would it go with that? Try start at £80. £80. Pounds. Sold. Sure. Wonderful. I mean, these couple of chairs I thought might... Uh, OK. See, that one there... Uh... No. <laughs> this is the one you mentioned, yeah? yeah that one? Yeah, it seems nice. I mean, I th the colour's gone, but... Uh... But the shape's still good. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. See, it's got the wrong casters here. The modern ones and then the, the right ones on the front, yeah. So this is one your mum wants rid of? Um, yeah. <laughs> Price-wise, what do you reckon? I mean, um, you know, I could save maybe 200. Um, we're not too far away. I think if... I'd normally try and buy this for somewhere around 120 quid. So, um, you've been really fair so far. So if I said um, 150... We're getting closer. 160. 160. I'm not going to argue with you over a tenner. Yeah, no, we'll have Great. that. 
Drew is definitely on a roll. He's determined to take as many chairs home as he can with him today. But I like this. I mean, it's it's battered to hell, but a uh, great big patch over the arm there. The leather's OK, is it? Uh, no, the leather's a uh, big, big chunk there that's been glued on, which I don't want to pull this off, cos it's going to take... See how it's, somebody's pulled it there and it's pulled the surface of the leather off there? Yeah. Club chair, armchair. Price-wise, what if we said, um... 100? Not enough. Perhaps a bit it's a more. Bit, that's a bit mean. That's a bit mean. It is a bit mean. We're just concerned what's underneath that. It's going to be a great big mark. Uh, 120, and uh, I, I'll be I'll be a very happy boy at 120. All right. Yeah. 120. Wonderful deal. Yeah, bride's not going to want that on a wedding night, no. is she? No. Yeah. Not very <laughs> romantic, is it? Dirty no. old bloke's chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Though he's got three chairs and a badger, it's the stuffed animal heads that will really make this visit worthwhile. That's the one. That's the one I really want. Antlers are very fashionable with interior designers at the moment, who could easily pay up to £200 each for genuine country house examples like these. And these big boys, look at these. God knows what that's off. Edward's been to ask his mother, and it's the moment of truth. She's willing to sell. Um, she wants to keep hold of the, the lion and uh, that huge uh, Nepalese bison. <laughs> the two, um, the, there's the two bits I really want. <laughs> oh, they're, oh, yeah, right. they're the two prized pieces for me. Stymied again by a manor house matriarch, but Drew's thinking of the team back at base and is determined to bring home as much as possible. We can strike a deal on the, uh, on the other heads. Uh, let's start with the gems buck. That's really nice. What do you want for that one? I think, really, that should be for... You know, for a good shield like that as well, maybe 150. Can we meet around... I'd like to pay 120. 120? I'd like to pay 120. All that. right, OK. Yeah? All right, so, yeah, we can it's do good. that. All right, OK. We'll do that. Sold. I'll have Sold. that one. Sold, haven't it? Um, now, these two here, the, the two uh, sort of near-matching antlers on the, on the back plates and the shields on the back, what do, what do you think? Perhaps we'll go 150 as well on those, really. Which are each? Each, yeah. Mm, yeah, OK. Nearly, they're so close, but this one, how much is Sam Burr? Well, perhaps if we go 150 as well for that one. Mm, so you're going to want 450 for the yeah. three. Tell you what, 400 quid, we've got a deal. A genuine piece of history of Burton Court you're taking away with you. 400 quid is a great price. All right, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. And the difference is... <laughs> <laughs> Got the wet there, heavy. There you go. Hi, right, mate. Ed, thank you. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, really. it's been great. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful place. Well, it helps keep the uh, council tax going for a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Good luck with the business. Yeah, well, really. it's going all right so far. Excellent. I'll put as much business your way as we can. Good okay? stuff. All Cheers. right. Bye-bye. Take care, then. Bye-bye. After a slow few days, the salvage hunter has redeemed himself and returned with a full van. Loads of stuff. Full van? Yes. The team is clearly impressed and relieved to see so much new stock and restoration projects. Low leather armchair. It's got quite a lot wrong with it. Rips, tears, cushion missing. It's had a big piece of wood nailed to the base to hold all the springs in. And a piece of carpet, <laughs> yes. A piece of carpet, yeah. Oh but I like it, cos, look, that is how low it's meant to be as well. Yeah. It's not been... Do you like it? Great shape. Yeah, I do. I like the feet. Yeah. Got this as well. Same house. Nursing chair. Good condition. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Got this one, which is lovely looking. You don't get any of these for ages and you seem to get loads in a good run, sort of. I know. It's weird, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Lovely. Do you get that recovered or strip or leave as is or...? Leave as is. Just, we'll sell that one as it, as it is. That's a quality piece, actually, yeah, it isn't is. it? It's a really good quality yeah. chair underneath that. I think this is just great looking. Wow, the size of that. That's really it's... impressive. The skull makes it. It's, it's great, isn't it? These are a really... There's an almost matched pair. 
That's like a moose or something, isn't it? Yeah, it could be. They had them displayed in the house, but the house is now a really top-class wedding venue, and these were um, off-putting to the brides. They didn't like them. Really? Really. So that's why they took them all down. Drew's riding high and takes the opportunity to share one of his famous puns. It was their stag night. Hey! <laughs> He's yeah. here all week, <laughs> unfortunately. Stick to your day job. Oh, well, it was great while it lasted. Popped you. How are you? Hiya. I want to keep Badger. Do you? Yeah. That voice was, do you? Not putting in the house, do you? That was the voice, wasn't it? Not in the house, please, Drew. Oh, I'll go in my man room. Oh, in your man room, OK. Yeah. To wash the Badger's hair? Or... Uh, no, just centre party. <laughs> The team gets the items he's brought prepped and ready for sale immediately. We sell antlers quite often, but to, to have such a collection all at once is uh, it's very impressive, especially the little badger's head. I was rather taken with that. Reminded me of uh, reminded me of Enzo, bizarrely. What's fascinating about the chairs is, to a lot of people's eyes, they just look like a load of old sofas. But underneath all that, the frames are beautiful. Again, Drew's eye. He spotted those chairs. They really are very, very special. Wow, look at that. That's 12 foot. And the table from Grey's Court has arrived back from French polisher Alex. Drew puts it up for sale at £3,600. It's always difficult dealing with third parties, but what we have managed to do was get into some wonderful old countries' estates. We've managed to save some historically important pieces from historically important houses. And in some small way, those pieces are now going to help pay for the massive running costs that these houses have. So they're going to benefit, and so will I.